Hi, Dr. John Arlett in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. In following through our you know, simple approaches to the face, when you're going to begin imaging, we're going to move on to the dorsum of the nose and the forehead. You're looking at this as an area that's important to understand the structures and the appearance of particularly the vessels in this area. We're going to be looking for the dorsal nasal artery. We're going to look for the supratrochlear and supraorbital artery. And we're going to take a look at the thinness of the tissue on the forehead, as well as the dorsum of the nose for those who inject in that area. So you want to fill that little defect up in order to be able to see well. Now let's put on our color Doppler. Here we are in the dorsum of the nose. We see some vascular structure. We have the dorsal nasal artery pounding below us. It's located about, well, let's just measure. We can do that. The dorsal nasal artery is 1.8 millimeters below the surface of the skin in the dorsum of the nose. So that's an important thing to know if you're injecting in that area. And the dorsal nasal artery, it can be uh, singular or it can be bilateral. I found it on the one side. And there's the other side. Now, when we're looking at these Doppler images, blue and red simply are detecting the flow of vessels or not, whether it's a, a vein or an artery. If we're looking at vascular flow, if it's blue, actually the vessel's flowing away from us. If it's red, it's coming towards us. So there we have the dorsal nasal artery. We'll see how this should actually disappear into the bone and because of its origin from the ophthalmic artery, you can see how really bounding that vessel is. And that goes back into the tissue. It'll go deep and then disappear inside the orbit. So that gives you an idea when you're injecting what you can expect from that in the location of that dorsal nasal artery. Now we're going to scan up. Now we're going to move from the dorsum of the nose. We're going to look for the supratrochlear. There it is right there. Just as we come up and now we can see that the forehead is very thin. So here we are in the midpoint. We're seeing this supratrochlear arteries left and right side. Can't press them away. And her frontalis muscle. So what we're seeing here in terms of, we see the pericranium, we see the frontalis, and then we see the surface of the skin of the forehead. And we'll get different images based on the characteristics of the tissue in the different, uh, in the different layers. So that we'll get more return because of, um, from bone than we will from muscle uh, or from, um, from fat. So these will have different appearances when we're looking at that degree of echogenicity. And so here I've moved over a little bit. And there we have, we're just following the supraorbital artery. Superiorly, you can see the supratrochlear artery immediately. You can follow these vessels quite nicely. If we look here on this, we'll see how the pericranium is reflecting bright white. We want to keep our device focused uh, vertically to that. So it's a very incompressible tissue. So it sends lots of uh, sound waves back. We see the frontalis muscle through here. And at this point, the supraorbital artery has not yet risen up through just in the middle of the um, uh, frontalis muscle. It'll rise up through it after about uh, a centimeter and a half. And then we see some of the fat in the superior aspect of the image of the forehead. And so if we just follow this vessel up a little bit more, And we'll follow it as it rises up in the tissue. Now, let's see here. Such a great demonstration. This is the supraorbital artery. We can see that go, we're going up through the forehead. We can follow it. Let's come back down to the midpoint in the forehead.
So we can see the central vessel is a vein because when I press on it, it goes away. I'm having a little bit of fun. So you can see where I'm pressing on this, this vessel's not going away. So here we are with the uh, supraorbital artery following it up high in the forehead. Great example of looking for vessels on the, um, the forehead if that's an area where you tend to inject.